women who went to a primary care doctor for mental health help. How did it go? Went in they get a referral for a psychiatrist as required by my insurance and was told it was their policy that they send me to the psych ward at the local hospital. I was having a depressive episode, not suicidal just very down. The doctors at the psych ward were confused. Almost as confused as me. It was a horrible experience. Hasn't prevented me from seeking mental help otherwise. But I wish I'd have advocated for myself. I was young at the time and in college. I haven't thought about this in a while as my memory is a bit blurred from the time. But that's actually a pretty nut story Lamau. I currently see my PCP who is a nurse practitioner and I find she actually listens to me. And works with me to find the best solutions with regards to medication. I previously saw a psychiatrist who diagnosed me and prescribed meds after a 5 minute initial conversation and I struggled for years under their care. Anytime I said the meds weren't working he just upped the dosage and let me suffer the side effects with zero relief. It was terrible. I am doing much better now with therapy and the right medication. I have a love-hate relationship with my family doctor. He very much reminds me of my dad. He's literally said to me, picture this in a very thick Middle Eastern accent, why are you sad? You have so much to be thankful for and quat. Not super helpful. But he's also been super supportive of me through my mental health struggles. Much like my dad. Who said mood stabilizers. You know what's a good mood stabilizer? Golf. And quat. He doesn't always know the right thing to say. But he has supported me and gotten me through really tough times. What screams I'm an ex-military? 1. If the food doesn't disappear in seconds it was either really really good or really bad. 2. Almost complete indifference to insane upper management antics. 26 year veteran of Royal Navy here. Never a need to thank me for any service unless I've held a door open for you. I've been outside for 13 years and I still have and wear t-shirts from when I served. But that's cause I'm too squeaky to buy new as they still fit. I have a sports car. I was fortunate the particular skill set I learned was transferable and I earn enough money to pay for it. I never try to ram my service stories down throats unless they come up organically in a conversation or I'm asked. I can and do sleep anywhere. The only ex-military guy I know is honorably discharged, combat engineer. They smoke a ton of weed but can jerry-rig all kinds of stuff with minimal resources. I know this because I went camping with them and a group of friends. He had a cooking grill over a campfire built in 15 minutes in the rain. Also on a cold night I fell in the lake completely drunk and he pulled me out. Got me a big blanket and put me by the fire to keep me from getting hypothermia. In short, what screams ex-military to me is the willingness to use the training they've received to help people out when an emergency happens. Dudes who still walk around with a haircut. Wearing t-shirts and hoodies with a US flag on one sleeve and crossed rifles on the other. People who stand and wait with their feet shoulder width apart and either their arms crossed or their thumbs in the belt slash belt loops. People who seem averse to ever stepping off the pavement and into the grass. Folks who won't walk and smoke at the same time. People who only carry things in their left hand. People who always move with a purpose. And quat, oh and any of the above combined with Oakley sunglasses with black frames. Day fine taking dumps extremely satisfying. Feeling an afterglow for a solid 30 minutes after dropping a deuce? Hell yeah. My cat ends up running and jumping everywhere after he poops. Probably feels a lot lighter doing so and same with I. Not since my diverticulitis and internal hemorrhoids showed up. Now taking a shit can be like having an anal birth. Painful and bloody. Sometimes. But I had hottest Thai food on the weekend and Chipotle last night and my digestive system is just destroyed RN. Oh yeah. When I have big satisfying empty feeling dumps, I make sure to ping a couple of my friends to let them know that I had a great bowel movement. It depends on how smoothly the poop goes. If it barely takes any effort it feels great. But if I have to push a lot I just feel pain after. Only two other things feel like orgasms, taking a great shit and cleaning your ears with a q-tip dipped in hot water. As long as it's satisfying. And yeah it stimulates the vagal nerve like I saw somebody else say in this thread. And also it's a nice dopamine hit. My brother is like this. To me it's just a necessary evil. I hate the smell. And how much time it takes out of my life, I have this thing where I never feel done. So it takes me longer I feel. I experience an amazing satori like moment after I've released. I have visions. I see things in the bathroom tiles. It's normally just a few moments. But 30 minutes? That's fucking weird. You might have a psychosis. The release of a dump can often trigger zen like states where you can see things that aren't there, or your mind finds patterns in things that are there, like bathroom tiles. Someone needs to do a study on the evolution of bathroom tiles and indoor plumbing. Shitting in the woods may have influenced the development of written language by seeing the patterns in the tree branches. What job is useless? At my local DMV. There's still a guy whose sole job is to scan paperwork. 55k a year for scanning papers. Bathroom attendants. I don't need somebody in there pulling paper towels out the dispenser just to hand it to me and compel me to tip them. Hustling. These hustle culture guys spend all their free time counting quarters from gumball and vending machines making like $500 a month in passive income trying to convince everyone around them to do the same so that they can pawn off the bullshit they bought and try to get out and go to the next hustle while working a shitty job they hate. My brother in Christ. Quit fucking around with trying to buy washing machines at a laundromat and take some vocational classes. 
Learn how to weld or become an electrician. Skilled trades can make that $500 in an afternoon. Check it out. Last year I had to go to India to visit a customer at a government facility. They had a lot of problems with little monkeys getting into the building. The solution? Hire a guy with a big monkey on a lead to scare away the little monkeys. Actually, chief monkey scarer sounds like an awesome job. Imagine the business cards. We have a specific security guard we've had for 13 plus years now and is pretty useless. The security guard lives there and has a TV. He watches telenovelas most of the time. All he does is open the gate. And doesn't even bother to even inspect though. Since according to his logic 99% of people who can afford a car aren't bad slash harmful people. He doesn't ask names or house numbers. Just opens the gate whenever he sees a car. Anyone can come in if they have a car. He doesn't even inspect faces. And you know the worst part? When moving into the Privada. You are supplied with your own control remote. The gates are also automatic. 